what's going on traders welcome to my stream today is pretty much um pretty much uh, the weekend and uh it's been a fun time trading this week today uh this week i was actually a little bit more tired than usual and uh, a couple times i was just having trouble waking up and uh the problem is is that we didn't have that many movers before seven o'clock and there were a little bit of low volatility on some of the days so i was like hmm you know in this trading you need to have a certain kind of hobby from time to time because things do um from time to time they do slow down and um uh, they do become very much um a little bit slow where you don't have that much range like you used to um anyway hold on all right anyway so i don't hear any noise <laughs> i thought i heard some noise anyway i'm uh, gonna talk about all my trades and what stocks moved uh monday through friday um and we're gonna discuss um you know the stocks so far uh pretty green there was a little bit of trouble on thursday because one of the stocks that i was trying to go long had an offering i did sell out of it but um you know it was it was just a little bit um challenging to trade that day but you know uh i i thursday i think thursday was it was it thursday i think it was thursday or i or, or wednesday anyway so we're going to talk all about my trades, how my week went uh, after my disclaimer, of course, starting with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. All right, starting out with Monday, we got pretty much P.I.K., uh, PIK was a stock on Monday that pretty much gapped up. I think uh, over here we gapped up a bunch and I was looking at it. It was just, um, you know, normally I like to buy 52 week breakouts. I don't really like to short 52 week breakouts. And uh, in this situation, we broke the 52 week breakout. I think it was 870, I believe. And um, we hit a high of, uh, I don't know, 8, 8, um, 880 or whatever. Anyway, so this ticker, I was looking at it and it was gapping up, I think, around 300 or some percent and 300 and some percent. That's a um, that's a pretty, pretty big, big, big gap. And uh, I was looking at all the other gappers and um, um, they they the, the volume, the money flow of the whole entire market was pretty much um, was pretty much uh, spread out in three different stocks or four different stocks. So it was uh, pretty much, I looked at it and at that moment in time, it seemed like, you know, I think I made a video about this. This is the gap up short idea. You know, once you have a stock going up from, I think $2, I think it was $2. I think it was up from $2, 160 over here into a high of, uh, you can see here that it hit a high of $19. Once you have, once they walk out this stock to these astronomical levels, especially when the broker is open, technically it was up at five o'clock in the morning, those brokers will buy in, will buy you in. And, um, you know, I had, I had a buy in happen to me to tell you the truth. And they just pretty much buy the stock back. And what happens is once, the, once they buy you in, say you're short at $3 and they cover you at $10. I mean, that's going to be a humongous loss for the short sellers that were that were in it. I mean, 3 to 11, that's not twice. That's four times down your money. So this is so once I saw something like this and once I saw the shorts getting bought in, uh, I knew it didn't have that much potential to go up higher. I don't remember if it had news or not, but it was uh, definitely a gap up short. I think it was the top gainer of that day. Uh, if I were going to look at it. Uh, finviz let me check if it did have news or not um pick i think let me take a look at pick over here so it was a pretty much uh gap up short scenario you can see so here uh the float was around 1.69 million and uh we were hitting the this downtrend over here and insiders on 81 percent so they took it up and they pretty much smashed it back down 
the date was on the 11th so it was just a big a big short squeeze after a four, four to one four to five reverse split and you can see after that it pretty much got demolished and got sold off pretty freaking hard um that was that was it for for pick um and i think my short on this gap up short was around i think it was 920 over here somewhere and or 920 over here somewhere because i because i was looking at this trend line to hold and suddenly i thought it's going to break down over here uh but uh you know and i was risking ten dollars that's what i told the chat that i'm short and soon enough this thing after after i shorted went down all the way to five dollars i covered most of my shares into way too soon around seven usually maybe next time you want to you know hold these gap up shorts i mean you can hold them most of the day maybe all day long and these are the great account builders techniques uh i actually covered i made three dollars a share you know why i covered because i was uncomfortable at one point i think i was uncomfortable when i was at 920 short and the thing tried to push multiple times into tens and soon enough it actually tried to push at one point over here into 1050 almost looking like it's about to break out and run and uh, that got me uncomfortable so i covered way too soon just because it went against me a little bit more than I was expecting and made me feel uncomfortable. But soon enough, the strategy worked. I could have just stayed uncomfortable and it added to this dip at 750 and then wrote it down all day long at 450. I mean, this was an astronomical gap up short. Probably the best one of the week. Probably low stress and pretty much uh, best uh, trade of the week uh, percentage wise. Uh, after after this pick ran, I think um, I think there was uh, you know John ca called a nice one in the chat room. You know the p power of team playing. I think it was on the eleventh. I think he called out uh, a ticker the the one that has the lowest float uh, the the lowest float of the day uh, and uh, I, I, STI right about here STI uh, he was like buying it at one or two sold it at 30, 133 and let me show you like exactly what STI did cuz you guys uh cuz you guys that that STI was nuts uh so you know just because you know I'm shorting something doesn't mean um uh this is a STI that day I didn't even see this one he took it off my scanner since I post the scanner but that day STI I think on Monday was it um on Monday we ran like um, I think right here, right here, this is, this is, this is the craziness the STI did. He was buying it at a dollar and he was selling it at 140 or something. And then next thing you know, this thing hit like $3. Unfreaking believable how this ticker hit $3. <laughs> I was looking at, I was like, I was like, there's no better Monday than this. Cause you know, he called it off my, uh, off my scanner. Cause you can see. Uh, you can see each morning I, I post a really nice, uh, you know, a gap scan right here. And in the morning we had STI here. It was it was right right somewhere in here over here. We got pick that was gapping up something, and then STI was somewhere on the bottom over here. I don't know where STI is. Somewhere somewhere in this. Um, where was STI? Is that? <laughs> Let me click on it real quick. Is it STI? I don't know where it was, but it just popped out out of nowhere. Uh, it it popped up out of nowhere, and this was the midday mover so far. And uh, we just pretty much uh, ran um, over here to like three dollars. So that was just an unbelievable call in the chat room. Uh, this this move over here, unbelievable, like a dollar to like three ten, uh, pretty nicely. Uh, so moving on to pretty much Tuesday, that was my home run opportunity idea. I mean, this chat room is not is, this chat room is not like you know trying to make trying to scalp you for ten cents or twenty cents or thirty cents. Um, I do most of the time would like to you know have you guys profit more than ten percent each day on a stock that I'm trading. So I kind of look for stocks that have the least amount of float. Most amount of volume, uh, stock that has news, stocks that you know are in play, stocks that are really good at uh, trading and they're good at the good risk reward. So you had pick here that I shorted at nine twenty five and we hit way back down. 
to pretty much 450. So that was a 50% gain. And then the other ticker, um, you know, STI, pretty much unbelievable price action, midday price action of a dollar up to three dollars. So we try to trade uh, stocks that make money for the for the chat and and stocks that are really volatile that you can make, you know, sometimes in this situation, twice 20 percent, twice 20, 30, twice 100 percent or something like that. So I went short on Monday. And I ended up making 2K that day and then pretty much uh, moving on to Tuesday. You can see everything for me is pretty much color coded. Uh, it's not color coded. It's like you can see this is the date of the stock. Uh, the date, uh, this is March 12, 2024. So we had our GLS coming up here. This is pretty much um, high. Like like I say in my mighty videos, try not to short stocks that have a high institutionally ownership because what happens to these stocks that have high institutional ownership, the majority, the majority of the people that are, you know, buying the, you know, the majority of the holders are long institutions like, you know, Morgan Stanley, Wachovia, I don't know, Chase Manhattan, you know, whatever institutions, that's, that's what institutions means. So I did not want to short it whatsoever, and it was easy to borrow. So what I say multiple times when I see stocks that are easy to borrow is pretty much try to not short them because, it's, it, because as you can see, I was buying it over here, and I was, you know, pretty much, um, pretty much a little bit uncomfortable. But we hold the trend like textbook. This is our GLS right here, so you can find out whether there is shortable or not. Uh, our GLS was easy to borrow. Um, I mean, the float was 17 million. I mean, it said here that was easy to borrow. Um, I don't know, maybe they changed that, but I was finding it easy to borrow. Insiders, institutionally, there you go. Once you got a stock that, you know, the reason, the reason you can find shares to short the stocks is that because the institutions are pretty much long. That's that's the in, that's the interesting thing about it. And soon enough, I mean, the thing pretty much, um, pretty much in the middle of the day, you know, they they killed everybody at open, and then you know I made my money. I made, you know, from like two sixty to three dollars, I made my consistent twenty percent. And at one point, I could have went long on this trend line at two thirty and sold at three dollars. That would equal me seventy cents, so that's thirty cents a share. Uh, thirty percent. So I could have made seventy cents technically if I would have been a little bit more um, patient and a little bit buying the support line over here because you can see the support line over here. And and after that, I pretty much uh, I only made around forty cents a share, but I could have made seventy cents a share. So this was uh, a really nice uh, a really nice setup to go long. And good thing I didn't go short because you know right here you think that it's over and it's under view app and it's gonna go. Pretty much, you know, it's the end of everything. And I said, don't short it because it's high institutionally ownership, easy to borrow, long bias. And soon enough, in the middle of the day, we just went from two dollars to two three eighty. And that's not coincident. It's because all these shorts that are coming in here, they got squeezed over here. Um, you can see the volume over here. All these people that were shorting uh, over here, they just got killed over here. So they pretty much got, you know, annihilated. Tell you the truth. Uh, the next ticker we're going to move on is Cero. Cero popped up in the middle of the day. Um, you can see the downtrend here. Cero, I believe that day. I think this is a low float. If I were going to look at Cero. If I were going to look at Cero. Uh, pretty much uh, Cero is a four point something milli float. Uh, you can see. Uh, so I pretty much try to short, try to trade the lowest float that I can. Uh, the ones that have most volume and the most the most uh, so March 7th so it didn't really have any news whatsoever the thing about it liked it is pretty much the volume the volume came in that day and uh, it didn't really have um, that much news I saw this downtrend break right about here 165 or whatever I didn't buy that one because it spiked from 165 to about 190 and that you know 30 cent push over here but it came back up and I saw here that Right here, we pushed over highs right here. So we push over highs. Then we have a, you know, higher low. Then we have, you know, uh, a lower high. 
a higher low, and then a breakout. So this is a technically an, uh, a wedge pattern formation right here. So I bought the wedge pattern formation as we got above two dollars. Soon enough, we hit to forty, and that was that was nice. That was my trade, forty cents a share. That was really my trade. Um, RGLS, and actually, what happened was the reason I don't have uh, actually. Actually, the reason you can see here my PNL and Claro and RGLS, yeah, uh, Claro I I sold all at 240. So um, the reason I don't have any profits here is because in RGLS is because I I didn't sell. You know I thought at that moment in time I thought RGLS is gonna go higher uh, because of the volume because of the percent gain and that was up on the day. So I only sold partially three dollars, but sure enough, it actually uh, did what I wanted it to do. Only it happened like after midday or like after eleven o'clock when the short sellers got pretty much annihilated right about here. So you know, um, I didn't really do anything wrong in RGLS. Like the only thing I did wrong is I didn't sell enough at three dollars. I only wanted to. I only sold a thousand shares, and then the next two, three. 2000 shares i pretty much just dumped it over here when i was going red on it because i knew there was going to trap uh, but once the, it broke this trend line over here I, I i got out from like my 260 area so i bought a 260 i held through the trend i sold at three dollars and then we came back over here and i bust i i sold i sold the rest over here so it was it was overall a profitable idea i would have to say but, you know, the, the way they maneuvered this stock, it was just under VWAP, under the trend, and then a huge spike. So they, they will do something like this. I do expect stocks that have a high institutional ownership to be like this, uh, to be ups and downs and trapping and, uh, and pretty much doing all this stuff. We ended up hitting the daily resistance over here at 340. I didn't really buy. I didn't really short. I just uh, took my 20%. And I moved on. I only trade between 8 o'clock and like 10.30 or 11. I don't have like, and after that, I'm pretty much chilling in the chat room. I just don't have that long of a trading window. The market doesn't really give me plays between before 7 o'clock. And the market doesn't really give me that many plays after 12 most of the time. I'm just saying, you know, nine, eight out of 10 days. So I, I, I come in when there's most amount of volume, most amount of liquidity. And then I pretty much just walk. That's uh, what everybody should do. You should walk with a paycheck after 1030 uh, because because of this. This happens multiple times. This is a midday chop and uh, you should avoid midday chops at all times because they're not fun. You know, a predictable trade from 7 o'clock a.m. till 1030. It's much better than a maybe after 1030. I'm telling you, I've been in this trading uh, small caps for a really long time. A sure thing, uh, making a paycheck every single day from 7 o'clock to 10.30, is much better than coming in after 10.30 and losing. So be extra careful after those times because it could work or it could not work. But, but you know, the percentages are probably not going to work most of the time. And you're going to be burned out. You're not going to be sleeping right. And you might go into some sort of you know uh some sort of you know spiraling down effect which i was reading in the latest book i'm reading um the latest book um i'm reading i think it was the uh the what was it i don't remember because i just finished it uh i was reading the mastering the mental game of trading so i was reading that book anyway clara was good uh, this this ticker RGLS was not that good. I should sell at least half when I'm 20% up. Uh, I should sell half when I'm 20% up. That's probably the only thing that I didn't do wrong here. And Claro is just perfect. There's nothing I could have done better there. Um, so Claro, I made my money. To maybe wait for 240 because I missed by four cents. Um, so that's pretty much um, it. Moving on to Wednesday, this this was the gap scanner on uh, Wednesday, on Tuesday, so you can see Claro there had you know very a lot of volume and RGLS had a lot of volume and Claro had you know and RGLS had institutions there of forty percent. 
So moving on to Wednesday. Wednesday was pretty interesting. Wednesday was the only day that I traded really well. GXI. GXI over here was really difficult to trade in this pattern. We pop up over here. I think, what was the news? Uh, G announces 3.5. They did an offering, actually. That's, that's terrible <laughs> that they did an offering. So anyway, so that stock did have news. Uh, let me see if... Uh, what was the news on on the ticker? Because I don't know what was the news. G5, that's terrible. They did that offering. Is it G5 or GXI? Sorry, G A X I G X A I. So G. <laughs> so this is G X A I. Uh, pretty pretty interesting. Uh, I think this was G X A I. So right here, right here, right here. Right. That's right. So we pop up on Thursday. We, it's a recent reverse split, one for twelve. Uh, you can see so here that March eighth, twenty twenty four, recent reverse split. That's always good. Uh, float is micro float around seven hundred k, and then we they pretty much did an offering. But the news, um, I didn't even see that. That was the news. Uh, Jaxos acquires rights to AI enabled technology from a top biofarming app. That's Somewhat decent, but not really that decent. Uh, it's decent, yes, it's decent. You got AI, you got news, you got the theme going on, you got you know recent reverse split, you got a micro float, you got a the really nice sound, you know, stock that has range. Yeah, this is a stock that I'm definitely trying to go interested in. So initially, we see it pop up over here with the AI news. I didn't really come into that at all. I, I waited until, you know, it had a higher high. Over here, we actually had a higher high right about there. And um, pretty much um, I got stopped out and then I went back in long. I sold half over here and I sold the other half over here. So that was probably one of my best longs that I had in a while. I'm not sure if I can pull out my buys and sells. Let me see if I can pull up my... Buys and sells because I do have my buys and sells real quick. Uh, G A X I. Oh, let's see if I can get my buys and sells. Where are my buys and sells? There, there they are. Is it? Is it that one? Uh, I'm trying to see if I can. There we go. There's my buys and sells. Uh, right here. So you can see. So, so I originally bought. So I originally came in long. So I originally came in long GXI at at uh, nine sixty eight, and then I sold at nine ten. So I lost fifty cents a share. Uh, that's fine. And then I bought at nine sixty two, sold half at ten seventy eight and eleven fifty, and then sold the rest at twelve seventy eight. You can see. So um, that was that was that was the best trade that I did in a long setup. So just because, you know, just because you see me short Monday does not mean you're not going to see me go long Thursday or Tuesday or whatever. this actually this stock was on Wednesday. So I don't only short. I also buy. I like uh, I like shorting gap up shorts uh, and uh, I, I like shorting gap up shorts. But sometimes I just don't know over here. You might say that this is a short over here, but I just don't know if this is going to keep going or not. So I didn't really take advantage of this ticker whatsoever, but you can see so that it was very weak and it had an offering and it was just, you know, $6 to $16 is a big move for the stock. So moving on to, you know, a uh, loss. I actually did go, I actually lose to tell you the truth. I, I lose on days I'm not following my process from time to time. And I did follow my process. It's just sometimes, um, I don't know. Maybe sometimes on Thursday, maybe I'm psyched out about this day or something like that. And maybe I'm just pushing it too much. But uh, in this situation, we had PRST over here. We gapped up. Not too bad. Uh, and uh, pretty much we had this downtrend. I mean, the reason I didn't like PRST to begin with, you know, I had a couple of new subscribers. They're sending me emails. And uh, I was like, you know, I got to like perform. I got to buy the stock that has most amount of, you know, volatility, most amount of range, most amount of potential. You know, you got to make money every day. And I was buying PRST 
And sadly, PRST, the flow was just too big. Like, I'm very uncomfortable shorting. I'm very uncomfortable buying uh, stocks that have, you know, very, very high float. Uh, like, you can see PRST over here. The flow was around 50 million. That's a humongous float. And insiders on 50%. So, I was pretty much buying it. And I'm like, I mean, it's gapping up already 80, 70%. Um, you know, it, I mean, the news, I didn't even have any news. I don't even think it had news. So there was no even reason for me to buy it whatsoever. Besides that it ran, um, it didn't really have news. And soon enough, I mean, it did an offering. It did, I mean, that was just, that was just not cool. Uh, anyway, my long was, my long on this ticker was pretty much uh, 41 and exited 38. You can see the downtrend over here was at 40. And I, you know, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned in the, in the pre, pre-market, what is it called? The pre-market um, live stream that when you're in a cold market and we don't have that many gappers and movers, you know, you should take uh, 10, 20%, 10%. When you're in a base hit market, you should take 20%, 10%. Uh, when you're in a cold market, you should take 10%. When you're a hot market, you know, you sell half when you're up 20% and you let the rest ride. When you're in a hot market, you sell half 20%, maybe 30%, maybe hold the rest for some unknown of 100 or 200 or 5,000%. But in a cold market and sure enough on thursday we had a cold market you have to take your money and you have to leave uh and in this situation you have to take your 10 percent and i pretty much uh didn't take my 10 percent. i bought it at like 41 and i didn't really didn't really sell it uh until you know because i i kept thinking more and more and more and uh you know there's a lot of pressure on my back because I know a lot of people like sign up and the first day they're just uh, excited to trade and they just want to, you know, I, I, I do my best each and every day. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like the extra pressure and I push it more than I should. And, uh, you know, sometimes I mean, I, I probably wouldn't have even taken this trade if I haven't had so many, you know, emails and signups lately, you know, people trying to make money and stuff. Because, uh, you know, there's there's extra pressure on me. Sometimes in trading, the best trade is no trade. Uh, and it'll be very hard for people to understand that because, you know, sometimes the best trade is a no trade. You are much better off, you know, buying, not buying a stock that doesn't move that much because you are playing yourself with you know, some unpredictable black swan event in which if you don't sell, you might get caught in this crazy offering and then it's going to be a huge loss. So PRSD was just not that, uh, not that great. I actually took my loss and I have a limit of my losses. Like, you know, I, 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 I have, you know, if I, if I come in and I take two losses, I pretty much don't trade that day at all. You got to have rules, you got to have regulations, and you got to protect yourself from yourself because your self will tell you that, hey, you know, you've been winning 20, 30, 40, 50 stocks in a row. You got to keep going. But, you know, just understand that you were winning those 40, 50 stocks by having a process, process of trading. And once you abandon that process and you take, you know, and you, you know, throw the risk out the window and you're just going to wing it and then you don't have a limit of a loss for each ticker like you know you're just gonna balloon and spiral and have one big loss so i i'm trying to keep my losses really small as you can see that was a loss and i'm and it i also lost in cctg uh so this is cctg over here and i was technically trying to buy this downtrend breakout right about here at 460. i thought it was just gonna keep going higher I didn't, I didn't even think that's going to be resistance. It didn't even occur to me at that time it's going to be a resistance. But soon enough, you can see that clearly that was a resistance. So I was buying into resistance. So sometimes sometimes you might, you might think this is a breakout of resistance. But the thing about this trade is that it traveled so much from 350 to 460. So it already traveled a dollar. In a hot market, I've seen stocks going from $3 to like $7.00. And they go like this and they don't stop. But right now we're not in that hot market. We're in a much colder market. 
And, um, you know, from 360 to $4 is a pretty big move. And you have to respect that. And you have to short the downtrend. So soon enough, I try to buy the downtrend. Uh, I try to buy the down. I, I try to buy it at 460 and I got stopped out and I didn't even touch it again. So having rules like when things don't work out, having a maximum loss per ticker, having a maximum loss per trade, and not ballooning and spiraling and pretty much uh, going on tilt, like uh, the book I'm reading now, is pretty much, uh, you know, you have to stay on your golden chariot. That's what uh, this book I'm reading is. The golden chariot of trading is like when you make logical decision, you have a process each day in which you go by, and you follow that process, the, the process that I have been doing for every single day. Um, right now, I, I have about, I mean, I have data for like two years right now. Uh, every single day, what has moved. I have, you know, I have I have about two terabytes of recorded data for about the last two years of what small cap stocks have done every single day. And I also have live streams during these times. So you have to catch yourself from spiraling or going on tilt i mean if you don't have the data you should not trade um you might get lucky you might win a couple of trades maybe five six seven eight trades but you know you're going to end up giving it back to the market because just just the nature of the game the market makes it easy for you to make money and shows you that it's easy for you to make money and then you know they, it becomes cold and you you're doing you're, you're doing the same thing you were doing before and you're like why is it not working anymore and um, you know the things have changed uh, stocks have changed the pattern has changed the market has changed and you have to adapt to upcoming conditions and to keep your money you have to <laughs> protect your money at all times and you have to have a maximum loss per ticker maximum loss per trade and maximum loss per day. And in this situation, I did have a maximum loss per day. And it and it triggered around two, three, four, maybe it's five hundred dollars. And I and I and I tried two tickers uh you know correctly. I bought this downtrend, I got stopped out, and you know, and there's no going in for a second one because this doesn't that is this stock did not have any type of news. Just remember, going on, going in the second time on a stock that doesn't have news with 50 milli float. I mean, how many times have I seen a midday offering like this on no news? Not that many times. I mean, mid, you know, midday offerings happen not that much. So you know, avoid black swans or midday offerings. And like in this situation, I was buying a downtrend break right here. I thought it's gonna keep going, and I was buying it at 460, and I got flushed. At 420, I lost 40 cents a share, just like an idiot. 460 to 422. So I do things sometimes that are just not going to work. That's just the reality of the thing. Sometimes you're just going to push the wrong buttons and it's not going to work. Do you know what you're going to do afterwards? Are you going to fight the market? Are you going to be angry? Are you going to take after? You're going to trade after 10:30? Are you going to break the computer? Are you going to, what, uh, send a bad comment on my page because something that you did that happened? I mean, there's certain things that happen to people when they take losses. How do you handle losses? Are you a person that just takes the loss and moves on? Or are you a person that gets stubborn, doubles down, triples down, quadruples down, and then have a massive, undisciplined, no-process blowout? What kind of trader are you? Are you <laughs> a trader that's going to be here tomorrow? Are you going to just going to trader that's just going to blow up? That's kind of like what I'm trying to say. So in this situation, that day felt completely awful. I have to say, I wanted to come back into the market and make my money back. And I, and I was very angry and I felt like, you know, I was not performing that day. And I, and I just uh, wanted to come and fight back that day. Because, you know, for me, I'm a high achiever person. I do like to achieve and I do like to move to continuously upgrade and continuously, you know, make more money each and every day and get better. And for me, losses are unacceptable. But I've been in this business for a long time and I have to say there's no way to avoid losses. Losses are part of the game. You have to. The only thing you can do is minimize them and not 
continue trading when you're on a losing streak or you are on tilt. Be very careful when you are on tilt. A lot of people don't know what, you know, since they don't have a process. In a bull market where everything is going up and you're making money, you can get away with so many things. Doubling down, uh, tripling down, and it still goes up. Uh, you know, you, you know, not man, not holding your stop losses. You can get away with so much stuff. And but when things turn around, that's when the bulls turn on each other. And you just might want to you might give up your year. You might give up your month. You might give up your two years. You need to have a process. And the process is respecting the loss, maximum loss per ticker. And uh, because the more you can respect the maximum loss per ticker, and the more, you know, I do, I do sometimes walking meditations. I do oh, oh, listen to some Buddhism texts like Osho. Uh, and it, and, and I, now I look at throughout my, you know, educational material. And that is the way I've, I reset my trading so far because I trade a lot and I need to reset multiple times because there's build up emotion. There's build up frustration. There's build up anger. There's build up, you know, being tired. There's build up. You know, maybe you don't have a girlfriend. Maybe you just gained 10, 20 pounds. Maybe you want to travel the world. Maybe you're facing an eviction notice. There's so many, a lot of things in your brain that will, you know, interfere with your trading. Uh, in trading, you have to come in and you have to be in Zen mode. Uh, and, and it is preferably if you like live in the mountains. If you live like in the mountains, you will, uh, surrounded by nothingness, you will be profitable. You cannot, it's it's hard. Like your girlfriend, something bad happens around you. Like your girlfriend has like some minor injury or she's spasming out. You need to be stable at all times in this business because, you know, this, this $1,000 loss per day that I had Thursday can blow you out. You can just press the wrong button and you can just lose two years, three years of of winnings. And then you're going to read a $20, $20 audible telling you about how this happened and how, you know, you went outside your process. You have to come with the process. My process is waking up at 7, looking at the pre-market scan, my gap scan, and trying to figure out where the momentum of the or in the money flow and which stock it is going to go and trying to position myself to take a long or a short position taking my stop loss if you know maximum two times and then moving on not fighting the market not staying after 10 30 not you know i only stay after 10 30 in a hot market right now we're not in a hot market we're in a cold market actually on friday this is the only time i stayed i stayed we're going to talk about friday as well in my next slide actually friday i stayed after 10 30 to tell you the truth and it worked out really good because on Friday we had this ticker called Verb, and we had JTI as well. So JTI was pretty much. I'm gonna skip J. I'm gonna skip JTI because that that JTI trade should have been pretty much a flat trade. Uh, but I pretty much, um, you know, I was chasing it and pretty much um, sold it a little bit way too soon, way too late. Uh, so JTI, I mean, since we're speaking of JTI, you know, I want you to show you that sometimes you're just, I'm going to put in JTIs over here. So JTI popped up. I thought this stock is going to get moving here because it was the lowest float of the day. The stock had news. And I was like, I was like, I thought this stock is going to get moving or something like that. So I actually, what happened was that I took a long right about here. You know, we had a pop come back down and then the first one minute to break high, break highs over VWAP I was punching in say around 1 120 and it was just very hard to trade I mean you could see how crowded this stock was um, and uh, you know right here 120 123 we break look at this one we break 120 we come right back down to 117 for five candles for a two milli float I think it was a two milli float this thing, was it a two milli flow? Let me see. So, you know, I don't like the fact that, you know, you have to understand like 
for a this is a five milli float. There we go. So it's a five milli float. So for a five milli float to not move, and it was not a re recent reverse split. So four or five, and did did it have news? Uh, March was so it didn't have news. So no news. Five milli float, and the volume was just insane that day. What was the volume that day? You can see how high the volume is. So just because, listen to me, just because. Uh, the, just because the stock has volume and it's a low flow does not mean it's going to go up. Just because it's rotating 20 times does not mean it's going to go up. Um, there's this thing called naked short selling. Um, I, I never really, I never really observed this until I saw it. And I was wondering why is this stock with a million float trading a hundred million shares it's not going up higher. Isn't it rotating a hundred times and it's supposed to go higher? But there's a thing called naked short selling. I mean, you could argue the fact, I mean, right here, I mean, these one minute candles were around a million. I mean, the float was around a f five million. So in these candles, there was a humongous amount of, you know, trades right about here. I don't even think if I, if I take the 15 minute chart, I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, the, 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 I think I was trying to get the 10 second chart, the 15 second chart. I don't even, I don't think I can take the 15 second chart. Uh, I don't know. I've, so far, the, the Trade Zero platform is allowing me to do a 15, a 10, 10 second chart, which is crazy because I never use the 10 second chart. Anyway, so in this range over here, they were pretty much, you know, ping ponging each other. And we reached pretty much triple top. We were in a cold market. Normally in the hot market, this thing would keep going. And I bought it at 126 and I said I was going to sell tell it out for flat. I had a 10% profit. So the point I'm trying to make here, when you're in a colder market, 10% is it. 10% is it for some of these stocks. Now, JTI was, now the, the stock that I did make money on was Verb. So this is Verb. Verb had news with Facebook. Like Verb has news with Facebook and uh, you can see so here Verb had pretty decent news with Facebook right about here and uh, actually you guys should should have should have read the news because it wasn't populating on my thinkorswim until actually 10 o'clock but at 8 30 you can see so here that you had Verb marketing live launches Facebook and Instagram social shopping technology integration so whenever a small cap company links up with a mega cup company because meta is pretty hot and you've probably seen already where meta went because I'm, I'm gonna just gonna put in meta over here and you can see how high meta came over here because Zuckerberg is probably the richest man alive right now next to uh, the, the Amazon dude uh, so whenever they link a small cap company, you're going to expect something like this. Uh, I actually went long on uh, this downtrend break right about here. I actually went long initially at around 40 cents and 44 cents, 44 cents. And I got smashed and then I lost 10 percent to 10 percent right about here. And then I actually got back in at 45 and I rode it all the way up to like 80. Just, you know, just because you do need to get stopped out. Um you do need to get stopped out when things don't work you need to get stopped out that's for sure because what if it went going lower you might want to you might want to ask yourself what if this stock you know broke above vwap and then smashed into the crapper you don't know if this support line is going to hold so i would rather buy it as it reclaims vwap and have a vwap stop that's kind of like how i've been trading i've been i've been trading them once it breaks VWAP, it needs to hold VWAP. That's kind of like mentality. Once it breaks the downtrend, it needs to hold it. So in this situation, it broke the downtrend and my and then the stop loss was VWAP. And then in this situation, it broke VWAP and then my stop loss was VWAP. So I was risking again around another 10% over here as I was buying it again. I think my rebuy was around 45 because I was like, man, because 9 out of 10 times, when a stock goes like this, like this, like this, we should have just we should have just died nine out of ten times. When it reclaims VWAP and then it finds VWAP at resistance, nine times out of ten it should have just died. But but I saw this thing over here and I was like, that's very unusual. Like this candle over here, as we came over VWAP the second time, it's freaking unusual. 
So I got buy again at long at 45 because, you know, right now this is an uptrend wedge pattern formation. And soon enough, once that uptrend web pa wedge pattern formation, we just pretty much spiked from like this this resistance over here, which was 50 to like 65 in like one freaking candle. And soon enough, then I, I held it. And then soon enough, we got up to 90 for my 45 long. So that was huge gain for me that Friday trying to come back in. Um, so, you know, verb was good. I have to say verb was good. The only thing I'm doing wrong, I think I did this week is verb. I traded correctly. Is this a good trade buying it here, stopping out here? Yes. Is this a good trade buying it here, selling over here? Yes. The only thing I don't think I did right this wrong this week. I, I bought CCTG over here which I thought we we're going to keep surging. And that was just the, the the resistance. But I immediately got out for like 40 cents a share. And the only thing I did, and I bought PRSD. We had a lot of low, uh, we had a lot of low, uh, low, um, um, really crappy stocks on Thursday. We really had like no opportunity, only base hits. Uh, you know, 36 to 44 in this range, 15%, 20%, 10%, only base hit. And then they pretty much did offerings on these small cap tickers. We didn't have that many home run potential. And once you're in a cold market, because right now we're looking at the S&P 500, and um, you can see so here the S&P 500, we're kind of just, you know, we're we're about to somewhat roll over or, 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 you know, we're a bit, I mean, we're holding the trend, but we're kind of running a bit out of steam and we might come back down a bit to reality because the market is very much overbought a bit and we might come back to, I don't know, maybe it'll come back to 470 or 480. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe not. But right now we are very much overbought territory in the S and P uh, 500. So, Stocks are, you know, a little bit base hit there, a little bit base hit in PRST, a little bit of, I mean, this stock, I didn't see any edge right here. There was no edge to trade CCTG. There was no edge here besides buying this downtrend break because this over here is not something I would want to buy. I like, um, this is just, this is just um, mambo jumbo here. Maybe I should have, the, the, the place I did buy, that was a great short. So there's a couple of notes I'm going to take like right here. PRST was pretty much interesting right here. Um, you know, if the stock doesn't have news, try to not come in the second time going long because you can see. So in this situation, like we try to push over 44, but but you have to understand this is a 50, 60 milli float and it's already up 60 percent on the day. It's very unlikely it's going to keep going on no news. So that had no news, it had a huge float. So even though this stock VWAP reclaimed over here, that doesn't mean it's, you know, it, it's too heavy and it doesn't have news. So don't go in. Like, you know, PRST is not the same thing as, as you know, Vero, Verb. I mean, Verb has news, Verb has volume. Verb, we broke VWAP, we went under VWAP, but the thing we did here, we reclaim VWAP. So that's something out of the ordinary. And I went long because it had news. But in this situation, the float is too high. Only 50 million. The float is too high. Verb float, I believe, it was around 12 million. So try to not... So when things don't work in this scenario, PRST, try to not come back in. I mean, you know, offerings don't really happen. One out of 20, one out of 30, one out of 50, one out of 100... I don't, you know, it, 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 I, I've seen offerings. I don't know if I were going to name them. I don't know, maybe 5%, 3%, between 2 to 5% of stocks have offerings. And I'm, and it's a very low percentage of if, if I get stuck in an offering. Um, so it doesn't happen that often. So even though this is, this looks scary because you're long at 40 and you go to 30, uh, these, these, these offerings don't happen that often. And, um, but the, sometimes it's just going to be one of those black swan events. And sometimes you do get, get in a black swan event, 
but they don't happen. It's like 2% or something. So try to not go back in in PRST once it's, you know, it, the stock pretty much, I mean, try to no, not go back in because the stock had, the flow was too big. It's already up 70% on the day. It has no news. No news. High float. Uh, you know, it's already up 60% on the day. That it's not, it's, it's not an indication to buy. Vero is an indication to buy. It has news. Big company. Meta. You know, it's holding, it's holding above VWAP. You know, it has a low float underneath 10 million. Those are good indications to buy. The other one, PRST, it's not a good, a good indication to buy. The other ones... Buying this downtrend support of CCTG is not a great setup. Understand the difference between an A setup and a B setup. And in this CCTG, I use medium size, which is about five grand, and I lost two, three hundred. In this situation, in Verb, I used about you know medium size, around 10 k. So medium size is ten k, small size is five k, and huge size is twenty, thirty k. So you know, you have to understand which one is an A plus setup. Verb is an A plus setup. Go more in verb. And, uh, you know, don't PRST is a 60 milli float already up 70% with no news. Don't go big size in this piece of crap. And if you do go big size, take a quick gain and leave, you know, and, um, and G GXI, great trade. Nothing more to say here in GXI. I don't know what else am I supposed to do with GXI. I made from $9 to $13, 40%. You know, um, you know, Claro made 20%. You know, RGLS made 20%. You know, P Pick made made 30%. So I, I make money most of the time, 10, 20% a day sometimes, maybe more, sometimes 33%. Uh, GXI was a 40% win, but the th the thing I'm trying to get you guys to see is that you're going to have a time of, 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 you know, you're going to have one of those days in which nothing works and nothing happens and you're going to take a loss and it's going to make you very angry and you cannot take it on the account. You have to have rules to walk away because most, and you have to have a process. Like even the most experienced traders go through this emotional turmoil in which they have a loss and they're trying to fight back. Um, the more you fight, the more you lose. Live to trade another day because there's so many people that come and go uh, and they give months and months and months and sometimes decades of work in just one day of stupid bad judgment. And that's the thing I'm trying to get you guys to understand. You see me make a lot of money and make really good risk reward. But I do have my days in which things are black and I just um, and I'm out of balance and, I, and, and, and they haunt me. Those days haunt me. And I'm sure in those days put an end to most beginner traders, uh, beginner traders uh, career. Like you have, you lose everything and like the Bitcoin 60,000 to 20,000, 90% of traders never recover from that. It's very hard to recover when you lost two, three years of work. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. I make money. I do have good risk rewards. I do give uh, really good, um, you know, setups and I try to look for really good setups. That is an A plus setup. But, you know, do not, if you're red that day, leave <laughs> this market will this market is not your friend it's here to take your money and it and it wants you to lose balance and get off your golden chariot and it wants you to give you give give them your money don't give them your money wait and come back into your golden chariot go back and doing your process each and every day with these trades and with these stocks show up between eight o'clock and 10 30 each day do not burn out do not trade before that take pro take profits have stop losses have maximum loss per ticker don't hold the tick don't trade a ticker more than one or two times and uh, you'll be all right bet a lot more on a plus setups like verb and try to you know this this is a cctg is not an a plus setup you know 
or PRST. It's not an A plus setup. You know, understand that there's going to be trades in which you're just going to be dead wrong, and that you can have these days back to back and back to back and back to back, and there's nothing you can do. It's just part of your process. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my one hour of blabbing. I do enjoy chatting with you guys, and uh, you know, trying to see if um, trying to see how well you know my reels are gonna come, because I'm because my my uh, YouTube channel needs more reels, so I gotta put this in the algo. Other than that, it's been a fun time chatting with you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great see you all. Uh, we're we're really uh, excited about this year. I'm posting new thumbnails, new keywords. Uh, maybe some travels around the world. It's going to be a fun time um, to get you part of, you know, what I have to offer for you guys. Other than that, have a good one and, you know, take notes and f review your trades over the weekend because that's what makes the difference between a successful trader and a trader that lost all his money. Work. <laughs> lots of work. Lots of independent work. Other than that, see you all later and peace out.